What's good, y'all? It's Boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out stiffest moments in WWE history. It's one of the things that uh, sometimes you can look forward to in certain matches, depending on the wrestler and the feud that they're trying to tell or the story that they're trying to tell. There will be some stiff moments. There will be some hard hitting moments where you're like, damn, I'm glad I'm not out there taking these uh, brutal chops or brutal uh knees and kicks and all this other stuff obviously the person we know to be one of the stiffer uh wrestlers in wwe is uh gunther another person shinsuke nakamura they will definitely lay in the chops in the in the in the hits and the claps and well not claps but you know you know clapping someone's chest with the chops leave you all marked up they they definitely tend to be on the more brutal side and i can appreciate those matches and moments where the wrestlers are stiff it gives that sense of realism gives that sense of like yeah they're really beating the crap out of each other and sometimes and a lot of times in these matches and feuds with certain wrestlers they are beating the crap out of each other so we're gonna check out some of these moments where wrestlers were being super stiff in WWE should be a good one. Appreciate all the wrestlers love and support. Let's get into this one. Asked to pretend hit each other while making it look like it really hurt. Sometimes the easiest way to achieve this is to hit each other and make it actually hurt. Sometimes right. it's easiest to try to take your opponent's head off. From punishments and receipts to two yep. bullheaded wrestlers Woo! not backing down, here are the stiffest moments in WWE history, starting with Spike Dudley's entire <laughs> career. Facts. Oh! We'll talk about wrestlers who were notoriously stiff or took liberties with their opponents. Mm -hmm. but what about a wrestler who took liberties with himself? Enter Spike Dudley, the bumping machine. Five. Every single bump poor oh. Spike Dudley ever took looked like it came close to killing the man. Yeah. From making wrestlers look great oh. like in Brock Lesnar's infamous debut to taking every oh. moves that like he been fired out of a cannon. Every single move oh. Spike Dudley took oh. looked oh my God. We can an entire video just of brutal Spike Dudley bumps. Ooh. But until we do, please enjoy this short section of Spike risking oh. it all for the average match. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. This one right here when he clipped the back of Brad he clipped the back of the table with his head. Oh my Jesus. Uh, slash JBL's clothesline from hell. Yep. Ooh. There's just no easy way to take this move. Notoriously stiff worker Bradshaw had one of the hardest hitting moves in all of wrestling. It was a running clothesline, the same move many wrestlers have used as a transitional move in everyday matches. Mm -hmm. Not JBL, nope. though. After picking up steam and running into the ropes, JBL would hit a clothesline oh. so hard it would often completely slam his opponents oh into the mat God. and even cause them to fold over onto themselves. While Billy Gunn and Rikishi would oversell this move, yeah. someone like Jeff Hardy or Shannon Moore looked like they had been slaughtered after taking Daniel Pewter gets chopped into another dimension, Royal Rumble 2005. Oh! After almost legitimately breaking Kurt Angle's arm, or at the very least embarrassing him on live TV and forcing him to tap out, legitimate MMA fighter Daniel Pewter thought he was making the most of his opportunity. The WWE office and wrestlers both thought it was time for Pewter to prove how tough he was, both physically oh, and mentally. Man. The physical part came during the 2005 Royal Rumble match. After Pewter entered, he spent the duration of his time oh. in the match getting chopped into oblivion by oh. Eddie Guerrero oh. and Chris oh. Benoit. Then Hardcore Holly entered, who was oh. there strictly to chop Pewter some more before he himself was rapidly eliminated. Pewter was then forced to mentally suffer, being sent down to developmental and never being called back up to the main Damn. Roster. Oh. Oh my God. Vader and Shamrock scrapped for that hurt, the deal. That's my, ch house hurt my chest right now. Damn. 
Oh. What happens when you put one of the stiffest workers of all time against the first superstar to transfer from UFC to the WWE? Quite a few brutally stiff shots, Jeez. as it turns out. Shamrock was still adjusting to coming back to pro wrestling after spending years in MMA. He hit Vader with some serious shots that wound up breaking the Mastodon's nose in uh -huh. four places. After a match full of the two tough guys smacking each other around, Vader put an exclamation point on it with a stiff lariat that almost knocked the UFC. Oh. Oh. Drew McIntyre <laughs> versus Gunther versus Sheamus. This was a That's very a stiff match for sure. Oh my god. Wow. None of these three big meaty men will ever be able to compete <laughs> with the likes of Ricochet, Rey Mysterio, or AJ Styles when it comes to high flying acrobatics. Where they absolutely dominate the aforementioned superstars is their ability to dish out and receive stiff shots. Facts. The trio knew this was their chance at standing out during WrestleMania weekend, and boy, oh did boy, they did stand they not out for sure. Just the part where Drew and Gunther are oh my each other god, back and forth in the middle of, the and they did that uh, at uh, this year's SummerSlam. Like I said, when it comes to Gunther, he's gonna give you some stiff shots, so you gotta be mentally and physically prepared to take the beating that's coming your way. Ring could have made this list alone, but Sheamus wasn't left out either. Just the redness on his chest by the end of the match shows how hard these brutes were hitting each other. Oh, oh goodness! God! Oh, that's it! Braun Strowman versus, versus John. Yeah. No doubt about that. It's J-A-G's. When Braun Strowman first separated from the Wyatt family, they spent several months building him up as an unstoppable monster. Many jobbers were used, abused, and disposed of by the monster of all monsters of course. during this time. Sometimes two to three jobbers were used all at once. They never even looked like they stood a chance, getting launched across the <laughs> ring, launched outside of the ring, and launched into each other in the oh my God. short matches. The most famous of these jobbers is James Ellsworth, who looked so pathetic next to Strowman that he actually got a WWE run. Ron <laughs> Strowman was a bowling ball to these poor jobber pins. How big oh. 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 Brock Lesnar versus everyone with German suplexes. Yeah. Ah. Uh. When Brock Lesnar made his long-awaited return to WWE in 2012, his appearances were few and far between. After a few years, he was seen much more frequently, and what also increased were the amount of German suplexes he dished out. The difference between Brock's Germans and the German suplexes of former star Chris Benoit is you can see Benoit would hold on to his opponent and guide them safely to land on the flat of their back. Brock takes a different approach. No, he just he launches them. opponents and tries to throw them as far away from himself as he can. This always looks brutal, always looks risky, and even led to Alberto Del Rio breaking a rib back at the Royal Rumble Holy! I didn't than know that. safely on their back, there are many instances of their opponent landing directly on their head and their neck. Yeah, bro. Oh! oh Farouk Spinebuster. We saw it on the we featured one member of the APA earlier in this video. Now it's time Damn. to talk about the other. Farouk had a reputation as being one of the toughest men in his generation of wrestlers. A real life athlete that was known not to put up with nonsense, Farouk's signature spine buster was brutal for Bow. all the right reasons. He got height lifting his opponent up, and there was always an element of throwing caution to the wind. It was as if executing the move safely wasn't nearly as important as smashing his opponent through the ring. Shout yeah. out to his finish move the dominator oh. which also threw caution to the wind and let's never forget the stiff clothesline he gave to chuck colombo in 2001 after chuck smacked the back of his head this is not a man to be messed <laughs> with and his spine buster proved that every week it's like he throws Start him down for holly's entire life yeah I see a fire up out there God, in a lot dang, of of late what? 1990s alpha males, you don't. Hey, bro, we just gonna have to square up, man. You hit me a little bit too hard on that segment, bro. And I, I, 
I'm fired up now. I'm fired up to beat your ass. To earn the nickname Hardcore without living and breathing it. Perennial mid-carder Bob Holly became <laughs> Hardcore Holly in 1999 when he started pursuing Al Snow's Hardcore title. But for Holly, it was more than a gimmick. Known for being a backstage bully and a general grump, Holly was the guy that Vince would put in the ring with new wrestlers to see if they could take it. As seen in the Daniel Pewter section, he chopped his opponent's chests off. This was commonplace in most mm -hmm. Bob Holly matches. Also, his finisher, the Alabama Slam, is mm -hmm. about as brutal as they get, yep. just smashing Bop. his opponents into the ring. And let's not forget his on-screen beating of Matt Capitelli that left poor Matt with a bruised and swollen face. Jeez. 1990s Steiner Brothers. Keep your eye on the Fonzie Ball! Oh! Every now and then, there's a tag team that makes me think, thank God they weren't bouncers when I was too drunk one night. The APA <laughs> is an easy example. More recently, the Authors of Pain come to mind, but the original You Don't Want to Mess With Them team uh -huh. has to be the Steiner Brothers. Legitimate athletes combined with oh legitimate steroid gosh. abuse created <laughs> the Legitimate steroid abuse! <laughs> Every move they connected with looked like it ended their opponents' lives, and this wasn't specific to their WWF days either. Just take a look at Rick Steiner hitting a jobber named Marlowe oh. with a German suplex. It puts Brock Lesnar to shame. The legacy of Chris Benoit. Oh boy. Newer fans may wonder why there's a legend behind Chris Benoit's name. He had the horrible tragedy with his family, but what about before that? Was he an incredible character? No, he was mm. barely even a good character. Was he sharp on the mic like Austin in The Rock? No, he mm -mm. wasn't a very good promo. So why is Benoit's name remembered so fondly by wrestling fans? People say it's because he was a great in-ring worker, and that is certainly true. But what really stands out in my mind is how crisp, stiff, and deliberate all of Benoit's moves were. Whether mm -hmm. it was a knife edge chop like we described earlier, or just slamming his opponent into the mat, everything Benoit did looked like it hurt because it probably did. Yeah. That concludes our list of the stiffest this moments was a in good one, man. WWE history. Which ones did we miss? Let us know. This was a good one, man. Uh, I'm going to have to give a Wrestling Royal a subscribe, bro. I like this list. I'm going to go ahead and give it a like. Link to the original video will be down below. So y'all go show him some love. Show him some support. Uh, but yeah, man. I am all in agreement with what was on this list. Hey. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot more stiff moments you guys can think of. So comment down below some other stiff wrestling moments in WWE you can think of where you just like, Jesus Christ. Like, oh my God, that was brutal, man. That's what makes uh, WWE what it is, you know, blending that, that line of what's real and what's not. And, you know, if you out there legitimately chopping somebody in the chest or clapping somebody in the chest with your hand or whatnot, you know. And you can see the visible bruising in the marks. A lot of the times it uh, enhances what's happening in the ring. Because now it comes out like, yo, this guy is legitimately beating the crap out of him <clears throat> for our entertainment. So, <clears throat> so comment down below. Let me know some other stiff moments that wasn't mentioned in this video. But I appreciate all the love to support you guys shown on the channel. Roll to 150K. And I'm still the undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on the next one. Peace.